reminder, the Holy Field uh, press box is open if you need to work over there uh, when we're completed. Okay, questions? Kirby, a couple of days into practice, just how's practice been this week, getting ready for Saturday? Yeah, I thought it was uh, really good uh, Monday. I thought it was really good today. So I've been very pleased. We probably got a little blessed by the weather today. It was not as hot as I was expecting it to be. It was overcast, but we were able to go outside the whole time. Pretty good humidity. Uh, guys worked um, hard out there and uh, had good good spirits and good tempo. I think we challenged them to have uh, a better week of practice. Uh, so far, we've done that, but we've only done two of the four. Coach, earlier in the week, you mentioned how teams are getting rid of the ball quicker, throwing the ball, and I think you said under 2.1 seconds was the average against you guys. Has that changed anything in, in terms of how you stack your roster, how you go about recruiting, particularly on that defensive line? Are you looking for maybe more weight to affect passing lanes or anything? Has anything changed at all? No, because to win football games, you can't throw the ball in 2.1 seconds all the time. That's, that's your early downs. As you get into third down and more sophisticated teams, they're going to drop back and pass on you, and you got to affect the quarterback. It's one of the number of things you got to do on defense. So you have to have people that can rush the passer, um, especially the you know when you get into the upper echelon, you can start playing your SEC opponents. It's not like that. It's usually that way in a team that might feel like they're outmanned on the defensive front, on the offensive line that's outmanned by a defensive front. So they get rid of it quicker. They want to protect their quarterback, but we don't see that the further up we go. So it doesn't really affect. You have to have guys that can block, tackle, run, catch, hit, intercept, and uh, that doesn't change how we recruit. Yeah, Kirby, you mentioned you saw some growing up moments from guys like C.J. Smith and Makai Muse. I was, I was I was wondering if you saw any of those moments from the corners that played like A.J. Harris, Daylon, uh, Julian Humphrey, guys that got in. Like, how did you evaluate their growing up in, in their first game getting a lot of reps? Well, they probably grow up more in practice because they get challenged a lot more in practice, but um, we don't put any greater value on the game reps they took the other day than we do the practice reps they took today because they get to go against really high quality people. But um, I thought they held the point and played a little more physical out there than I expected in regards to uh, AJ, Julian, and, and Nyland. Uh, Davis played quite a bit because last year he got to play a lot in some of the games. Um, and then Kamari's played a good bit, but nothing really stood out. Um, I thought those guys played with good confidence. Yeah, you've been dealing with some injuries in your inside linebacker room. How are Schmile and Raylan Wilson progressing to get trying to come back? Yeah, Raylan is back in a black shirt. He's practiced the last two days. It's so great to have him out there. I don't think he's 100%, but he's coming off a hyperextended knee. So it's, it's he's wearing a little bit of a brace, and there's a little bit of a, a lumber there. But he was he's really a bright kid. It's like he, he didn't miss a lot mentally. He was able to stay in tune with what's going on while – he was not practicing, which is really hard for a freshman to do. Um, Smile has been good. Like I said, I, don't, I didn't know how much he played the other day, but in our mind, he was he was playing. He was playing in the sub situations. Um, he's played a, a few more snaps this week, uh, kind of building him up, trying to uh, ramp him up slowly to a, a full games kind of quota of snaps. So I don't know how much that'll be um, this week, but uh, he's practiced well. Kirby, you guys had some key backups the last couple of years in the offensive line that you rotated in, you know, during the thick of the game. Like, are you guys close to, you know, having that kind of uh, guy or two that might come in? Um, I think it was maybe 24 nothing before some of the other guys might come in. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the exact score. Our, our plan was uh, Dylan um, Fairchild was going to play some, and I thought we did, but maybe he didn't for them. You know, better than I do because I don't, I don't check the score to see when they go in. Um, and then uh, Michael play a little bit. He, he's got to play with more consistency. He he has the ability, but there's days that he's he, he doesn't do his assignment, and it, it worries you because you know the one of those things could be a, a tackle for a loss, a cost for a drive, a hit on a quarterback. So he's got to do that at a, at a more consistent level um, of being a play. And then Jerry Wilson's the other guy. So you know those three guys have played a lot. Blasky um, has done well, and uh, trust Blasky to go out there and play. Coach, how do you feel like Xavier's really played his first real start in extended playing time? He did some good things. He had a couple of mental errors. I think the anxiety of playing in that game and starting, he's, he's played in games, but he's played more as a sub rusher. Um, so to play stack inside backer and sub rusher, which we ask our guys to do, was a daunting task for him for a first time in the first game, but he played hard. Um, he missed a couple run keys and he, uh, he missed a couple walkaways, we call them, where you have to walk out of the box. But pleased with sort of development and uh, he's been very coachable. Coach, how do you think that Memphis uh, week looked? I mean, you 
spot for the first time? Um, really wasn't a big change or a big deal of any kind. I mean, we anticipated those things being different. I, I think that's going to be a lot more significant the tighter games are. Um, with ours not being as tight in the second half, it, it probably didn't didn't matter. You know, you show up, uh, you know, before the before the half, um, we kind of talked and communicated about the drive there where it, went, it was over two minutes. So we knew it was going to run until it got below two minutes. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have uh, we didn't have the one timeout to play with, so uh, it didn't it didn't matter. In, in a situation where we had three timeouts, we might have chosen or elected to use those, but. It was not significant in terms of anything. I think uh, across the country, there's a lot of um, scuttlebutt about the number of snaps, but uh, I don't think we can significantly say anything until we get more data to kind of get a, a good barometer of that. You spoke to Mike Hill yesterday. What sort of progress have you seen from him this year, especially after he had to miss a little bit of time? Um, maturity, he's just very, carries himself well. He's a leader, he's uh, very mature. Practices hard, plays hard. Um, he's he's what you want a football player to be. He's tough, physical, does what you ask, and um, he he really handles coaching well. You know, for a guy as talented as he is, he doesn't think he has all the answers. And uh, very pleased with, with where he is, and need to find a way to keep him healthy. Uh, saw Jordan Hall that's Need or want? I mean, you you always want um, really disruptive, violent, quick, uh, twitchy players. Everybody wants that, and you 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 need both. You need someone that can do that. You need somebody that can anchor and handle double teams and strike blocks. Um, you have guys that can be disruptive. Uh, I just don't know if they can do it and consistently do it and stop the run as well without guessing sometimes. So, I mean, our, our defense alignment are perfectly capable. There's just there's not that kind of guy. And even Jordan and Devontae were here now. They were not that kind of guy either. They were big, physical guys. Devontae was twitchy and quick, but he was not uh, what Jordan was. And, and Jordan was a very unique player in terms of stopping up two gaps and, 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 and not necessarily being an elite pass rusher. But very comfortable with the guys we've got and uh, very comfortable with what Jordan's doing, being able to help us. We want to keep bringing those guys along so that we have – more of those guys than anybody in the country. Checking on a couple of offensive guys, you said Dejan, you felt like he was good to play. What, what does he look like in practice this week? And Lad, day to day, what, what's his participation been like? Uh, Dejan's looked good. He's practiced and uh, done well. Not in the black jersey, still got a knee brace. Um, Lad has not practiced with us. He's done routes on air, he's run routes, he's run, he's cut, but he is not uh, taking hits. And, and, and Doing like reps, like whatever you call it, practice reps. He's done reps on air. Coach, you coach a lot of good safeties. Who does Malachi Starks most remind you of? Um, well, I've been around some thumpers, and I think of all the guys, the the Mark Barons and the Ha uh, and Dix and, and and Dom Sanders here and uh, Lewis, you know, Chris and Richard. And he's really different than all those guys. He's He's probably the one guy that, if he had to, that could go out there and play corner if he had to. I mean, he's got a coverage skill set and speed skill set um, that most safeties don't have. He's a good tackler. Maybe not as physical as those guys in terms of knockback tackles, but he's a good tackler. Uh, and he's got good range, very intelligent. Coach, after the game, you said that you voiced concern about creating turnovers, but a big emphasis last year was uh, limiting explosive plays. What makes Georgia so good at limiting explosive plays? Well, I think it's hard to run the ball against us. Historically, if you just say over the history of seven, eight years, we've been really high in run defense. And, and when you do that, you force people to throw the ball. And uh, we say you do more with less. So you cover, you can cover more with less in the box and occupy gaps if your defense alignment or have the ability to strike and play the run. So you, we, we have been good at that. We have to continue to be good at that, but that sometimes can limit explosive plays because you don't run the risk of bringing five and six guys that often.
I might have missed it if you touched on it, but uh, Javon Bullard's you know first game back there at the safety. Uh, what what was your observation of his work? Well, I wouldn't say that I can get a true. It's hard to get an evaluation because he didn't get tested. The longer they hold the ball, the further the receivers can run. The more the ball goes down the field. I don't think there's a lot of downfield throws. What uh, he did well was tackle. Uh, he was in the right place. He really did a nice job in the perimeter RPO game, which everybody runs now. It's millennial Oklahoma, I call it, out there on the perimeter. He's, he's really good at that. Um, but he didn't get tested on hard play action, eye transfer, shots in the middle of the field, and that's the area that we work with him every day on so he can be really good at it. This is the most different thing about playing the safety is the deep part of the field. And uh, he didn't get a lot of chances. Coach, how Jackson make doing with his injury? He's running. He's out there running, and, 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 and he, he was over there with Ladd a lot of times running and cutting. I would think that Ladd's ahead of him if I had to say based on what I see, but he's off out of the boot. And, uh, of the, off the treadmill, he's out there on the real grass running. What more do you know about your team at this point this year coming off that UT Martin game compared to some past years where you've opened up against a more marquee opponent like a Clemson and an Oregon? I don't think you do. I mean, I, I really don't. Uh, I don't know what we learned last year uh, in that Oregon game where almost everything went our way offensively. And, then this year, everything almost went our way defensively. Obviously, two very different opponents. I'm not comparing the two opponents, but I'm comparing what I know about our team. I don't. So in each of those years, there were games immediately after that that we had question marks. And uh, I think you're always going to have question marks. I mean, nobody says you got to be the best team after we've won. Kirby, I was going to ask you about Ball State's uh, tight ends, but since you mentioned that, I was going to ask as well about is a back injury more tricky than like a knee or ankle in terms of whether a guy's going to be available or not? Yeah, it's tricky to me because I don't understand it. You know, it's one of those that um, I listen to Ron each day talk about it. And I can't even explain to you exactly what it is. It's a really big word. But um, it's it's frustrating for him because he doesn't control. Like he, he runs and does great, everything's fine, and then one sudden movement can set him back and he has pain and then he's back down. So he's – He's battling his tail off. He rehabs three, four times a day. And he's like, I can go, Coach, I can go. Let me go out there and practice. And, and uh, we're not going to do that until uh, we're certain. So, yeah, in some ways, it's probably more frustrating. What about the tight ends? For both They're big, uh, really good, talented tight ends. You know, the one kid did play uh, last week, um, and the other kid did play and played really well. So uh, they they have they got good tight ends. Coach, you mentioned modern day Oklahoma. I feel like every time we're out of practice, we see y'all doing some type of two over two drill or three over three drill. What's the key to being a really, really good tackling team out in space like you guys seem to be every year? Uh, understand leverage, leveraging blockers. Where's my help? Where, you know, we don't we don't let guys just do what they want to do. Like there's a play in the scrimmage, I mean, in the game the other day that, that Bullard trusted Taki. He said, Taki's going to be there. I'm going to fit here, and we're building a wall. You know, I think Trey Scott and our defensive staff do a great job of teaching the defensive backs that on the perimeter throw game, run game, it's really just defensive line play. I strike my blocker, I hat in hands, I check my gap, I stay in my gap, I trust that my buddy's going to be in the other gap, and then if I have to shed and get off and go finish, I'll do that as well. But um, we, we, we practice that a lot because we see it. And so our offense does that, we do that, we do a lot of perimeter drill work. How big was getting a guy like Tremel back for another year, having that experience in the defensive line? Yeah, sure. it's been huge for us because look at the situation we've been in. That's a position that we're probably the thinnest on our entire team, more so than running back and uh, running back and tight end is is the defensive. What I call the big end. Um, we've got defensive tackles, uh, but we we have a deficiency there. And with Ty has been injured. Um, back and forth. Michael has been out almost all camp. I mean, where we would be without Tremel, we would be forced to play undersized outside backwards at that position. And um, Tremel's given us uh, great leadership and great consistency.
you know, was there maybe a moment during fall camp or this offseason when you felt like the lights sort of came on for CJ Smith that would allow him to do what he went out and did for you guys, not just on Saturday, but throughout the course of the season? Yeah, there is, but I can't define that moment. I mean, there, there were several times I was like, whoa, whoa. He, number one, he's been, uh, what do you call it? He's been <laughs> present. He has not been injured. He has had a very injury. It's almost mirrors Arians early years where he had this, he had this, he had this, he had this. All of a sudden, he was there for 10, 12 consecutive practices, and he started showing up. I'm like, dude, that guy's blocking good. Man, that guy's running good routes. He's catching the ball in his hands. He looks good. And, and, and then, boom, he had a little bout with a hamstring. And then, he had, boom, he had something else. And then he battled back and got through that. And uh, I've really just been impressed with his physicality blocking and his, his speed. His, I mean, we knew that we were getting somebody that could really run if we could get the rest of the traits to show up. And he's still a work in progress as a, a receiver. But, man, he, he, he works hard at it and has done a nice job. He's starting to understand me. I think BMAC and, and Bobo have done a great job developing Got time for two more questions? It's kind of on that, uh, in, in that vein, having Marcus back out there to split in, he always talks about how much pride he takes in blocking. And is that is that a difference maker, having a, a veteran guy like that uh, who can do all the things and do them correctly every time? Yeah, it really helps. I think Carson's confidence is one of the big things with having Marcus around is like, Oh, all right, Marcus knows every fastball play. Marcus knows exactly what to do when he checks. Marcus knows the route tree. Marcus, Marcus gives you comfort as a quarterback that he's going to do it right. Not just the, just the physicality and blocking, because he's more than a blocker. He goes up and, and makes plays on the ball. He had huge catches last year over the middle, the end zone catch against Tennessee. I mean, he's just very reliable. And uh, I think having him back gives all those guys a little more swagger and confidence at receiver because he's out there. And it takes a little bit of a load off the other guys in terms of volume. Coach, when we talked to Mike Kelly yesterday, he mentioned how you guys are a team-oriented pass rushing unit. Is that something you guys ever have to fight against on the recruiting trail? Is it something that other teams use as a tactic? Like, hey, their guys don't get stats. Well, we usually fix that when we show them how many we have drafted and that is silenced. Because we put Travon Sacks up there and say he went number one overall. We put Devontae's up there and say he went in the first round. We put Quay's up there. We put Nolan's up there. We put Jordan Davis's, and then they don't say anything. See. <laughs> <laughs>